Now, this morning we are going to have a our portrait, excuse me, a particularly interesting topic, if we may say so, because um, this is one of the few weeks during the semester wherein we're going to discuss about sexuality, no sexuality, as well as um, social or sexual orientation, gender identity, and gender expression. So today, as well as next week, those will be our topics. And um, personally, we believe the instructors of gender and development in our university believe that it is an important discussion to integrate into generally into gender studies no? because if we look at the curriculum in college and in senior high school um, gender and development is one of the few few subjects wherein sexual sexuality education can really be integrated into um, into education. So um, if we refer to some of the many issues that have been happening in the Philippines uh, in, re in relation to, to sexuality in general. So um, for instance, now we could cite, we could cite some cases or at least if we have followed the news we might uh, have heard or it's not exactly a a um, headline nowadays because of course we're going through the covid crisis but in the last few months and years there have been cases of sexual harassment in the media rape even pedophilia which is which are all very negative um, problems in the in philippine society and um, a few months ago, I was I was watching a video on YouTube of a TEDx talk given by uh, a celebrity uh, named Kat Alano. She is I, she is I believe a, a model and a VJ, and she shared about her her personal story of being a victim of rape not in the media industry, and she mentioned about. Um, about her experience that she was raped by a famous actor. And um, in her message, she said that in some countries, sexuality education is really integrated into the curriculum in a sense that young people know about uh, how to really, how to really communicate assertively to others when it comes to experiences or occur occurrences um, that wherein they are at risk of um, sexual or drugs, tr drug, uh, no, no, drug risks. So um, she also mentioned, Kat Alano also mentioned that in the Philippines, because we are very conservative and we don't talk about these matters with our family in school, maybe because of course, perhaps our religion in, in our country, no? that young people are very ignorant maybe. I know that not everyone is like that, but especially in areas that are that are low income, um, it's easy for girls, for teenage girls, to get swayed to marry early, get pregnant early, you no. Know? So, uh, and to be to be even victims of these of some of the negative. Um, crimes, sexual crimes that I mentioned earlier. So in in that particular TED talk given by Kat Alano, she mentioned that uh, sexuality education should really be integrated into uh, the curriculum. It is already in integrated into the curriculum, but um, get this class. It was only in 2018 that the Department of Education decided to um, actually include uh, sexuality education in the curriculum and there are also um, in the international level the united nations educational scientific and cultural organization also has created a curriculum to teach this particular um, lesson uh, or, or topic and the lesson that we are going to have for the next two weeks will be based on the unesco curriculum so i'm using the 
UNESCO curriculum for the lesson today and next, next week. So that's really just an overview of the topic. What do you guys think about that? Ansay pang lantaw na to, may tungod aning discussion na to karon buntag. Okay lang ma'am, mura siya kanang eye opener. It is, it will be something that will, that will be, we can learn from it, no? This morning, it's an eye opener. Thanks Athena. Anyone else wants to... Uh, give their opinion about the discussion. Can we have from the um, from the other students? Let me see the list of students today. Mam, pero kana ng topic wala na siya sa book, mam ba? No, it's not. But uh, I shall give you handouts just for this lesson, I think, uh, because for the rest of the semester, we're going to go through it. I I'm interested in just um, asking the opinions of the other students from different um, backgrounds. No? Uh, Narahaina, what do you think about the topic for today? Um, nor high na. <laughs> Basi, madunggan ko mo. Ah, yes, nor high na madunggan. Oh, regarding sa uh, anang topic. Yes. Kay, feel na ko kay interesting siya since first time ko maka-encounter ana like mga gafocus man ko sa major subject so I think interesting na siya. Yeah. Thank you, nor high na. Um, it's maybe a fresh um, um, it's a fresh lesson perhaps compared to the other to the, to the other subjects that you have this morning or this semester. Good. And um, just looking through. okay, uh, we can have those two um, students just for now. Now for the whole um, for the whole discussion this morning, uh, I would like everybody to really um, feel free to to share no, your thoughts about the topics. And I am giving, um, this will be recitation. I will be giving points for recitation for everyone who will um, share no, and um, recite in a way. Let's not call it a recitation. Maybe we'll just have it as an exchange. Who will participate in the exchange? Give your thoughts in the chat. So this will be particularly scored. So before we begin, we shall just look through some of some discussions about sexuality education that could be a barrier towards us going through this topic. So starting off, so starting off, this is part two. Um, this part was supposed to, supposed to be the second part of the discussion today, but I just made it the first part because I think it's better if we start off with talking about what could be the the barriers towards us learning about sexuality education this morning now before we proceed to showing the facts and um looking through the overview of sexuality education in the philippines um as well as the circles of sexuality we are going to go through that today now i would like you to take out your notebooks and or a spare piece of paper and uh, kindly answer the following question. So uh, what could be the social or cultural realities in our communities today that may impact the teaching of sexuality education? So what could be the 
um, maybe the stigma that is attached towards talking about sex ed, what could be the um, barriers, no? whether that be within among us in the class or in our community, you know, in our in our city um, particularly. So please do write that down. And once you're done writing that down, kindly um, share your answer in the chat in our Google Meet chat. Okay, we have some responses no, from Leslie. Sexual education con is considered to be a taboo. Okay, so that's true now that um, we still don't exactly talk about it because it's a discussion that is not usually discussed about. So sexuality education is a taboo. So um, just to bust some of these myths class about sexuality education, please do send in your answers as well. I'm just uh, addressing the initial answers as of the moment. I'm uh, looking through the worksheet for that we are using. English, You can also um, write it in Bisaya. <laughs> so, in relation to sex ed being taboo, no, um, in actuality, every Every um, member of society, particularly or in uh, in detail, or specifically parents and families, play a primary role in shaping key aspects of their children's sexual identity. However, in our country, you know, and especially maybe in our families, sometimes that's not exactly the case. But um, because you know, as parents, parents would um, look at their children and not want to exactly. Um, delve into those topics often because it is a little um, sensitive, no? May I ask if there are any any students in the class who are already parents who have um, children? Because I do have a few students, no, in in Liceo who also are parents already. Anyone in this class? Okay, none. So, yes, uh, particularly going back relating to sex ed being taboo. So yes, um, children or parents play a key role in shaping their children's sexual identity. Schools and educational institutions where children and young people spend a large part of their lives are an appropriate environment for young people to learn about sex, relationships, and HIV and other STIs. Because in schools, well, um, students no, spend a larger part of your time in schools with your friends as well. When schools function well, young people are able to develop the values, skills, and knowledge to make informed and responsible choices in their social and sexual lives. Teachers should be qualified and trusted providers of information and support for and support for most children and young people. In most cases, parents are among the strongest supporters of quality sexuality education programs in schools. 
so we're looking at the lens of of um, information everyone that um, that we want young people to be equipped with the right information about sexuality so that uh, you yourselves will also understand your own sexuality you know, because there are a lot of aspects towards sexuality, not just um, actual the actual um, notions that we often attach to um, to sexuality. Okay, other answers here we have from Norhaina, sex ed may seem uncomfortable to discuss. That's totally understandable. No? I'll just uh, go through everybody's responses initially. Then for Kobe, introducing sex ed to adolescents is, is, might be... Yeah, yes, might, might lead them to encourage them to do certain sexual acts. So that's also a a common answer as well. No? Sex ed leads to early sexual encounters. Okay. So yes, we have some, some um, married students as well in the class. Good. So... Um, I would, I would really, of course, want to hear everybody's um, ideas, no? especially for the older students. Um, some of the students are really open-minded. Yep, not open-minded. Talking about sexuality is hard to talk in front of people because our society is conservative. So noted. Uncomfortable, conservative, taboo. It is already practiced that sex is only for adults and parents. That is why most of the children are censored to this topic, including the teenagers who are underage. We will learn later on class about the, the statistics from the Department of Health relating to the number of young people who are sexually active not in our country. Cultural barriers, because some are not open about it. They think that it's inappropriate to learn it, especially from cultures who are conservative. True. That, that is um, very well noted. Um, sexuality education would be something new for most, including me, since the Philippines is a conservative country and really fixed on the norms in terms of gender. Sexuality education is a topic that is not widely accepted by some Filipinos due to the differences in culture. I think one of the factors that affects teaching of sexuality here in our country is the religious practices. That's true as well. So religion... All right. Some parents may be hesitant to expose their children to this type of sex ed, whether for religious reasons or a simple desire to preserve their innocence. That's also true, no? in a sense. Um, uh, from Rebecca, the culture of the Philippines, particularly in relation to being conservative, it, it's hard to open up regarding the topic. Some may think it's bastos. Yep, noted about that as well. Okay, uh, sex ed may be awkward or weird to some people because of the culture they were raised in. Um, it's a controversial issue. It's a conservative topic. Okay, so looking through the responses here. Now, uh, um, it's it's necessary for us to actually address these class now before we actually start off because um, it will help us facilitate the discussion better. Firstly, in relation to, to the topic being taboo and in terms of culture, no? cultural reasons and religious reasons. So accordingly to According to our a guide here from the United Nations, sexuality education is, a, is often against the culture or religion of some groups. However, um, 
sex ed or sexuality education stresses the need for cultural relevance and local adaptations. Now, we, we, we respect the cultures of everyone, no? um, whether that be from our various beliefs. And please um, be assured that in this discussion, we are not going to use any vulgar topics or vo vulgar, vulgar terms in any way. Um, this is, this is a, well, the discussion in particular is solely made for, for information purposes for young people to be able to discern properly in relation to sexuality no? and in our current and future dealings as well with other people. So um, in terms of cultural relevance, um, this, this can actually be done through engaging and building support among the custodians of culture in a given community. Although right now we're in a crisis, it's not a, it's not a priority. But um, religious leaders, no key stakeholders, including religious leaders, must be involved in the development of what form sexuality education takes. Um, however, it's also important to change social norms that are harmful. Um, and that are not in line with human rights and increase vulnerability and risk, especially for girls and young women. So, um, our country is particularly open. Actually, it's, we are not exactly that conservative. Com I mean, we are, but um, we are very conservative, yes. But I believe that in terms of young people who are sexually active not in the Philippines, we are, we are often more influenced or in the last 20 years, no, Filipino young people are have been um, influenced by Western media. So with that, there is a higher um, change or there has been changes towards um, sexual activity in a way, uh, as what we will see later on. But I've noted about conservatism again please do take note that we are going to take this topic sensitively um, in relation to it being an uncomfortable and awkward discussion um, that is also quite well noted but um, we are not going to everything that you will be able to write down in your actually the discussion will be part of your prelim project class which i will just discuss shortly so um, I will ask you to, to uh, write journals about your own um, appli application of the terms that will be discussed here, such as um, discussions on sexuality itself. So uh, you will have a safe space to, to write about the topics here this morning. But in terms of it being uncomfortable and awkward, that's well noted. But um, looking through the topic here, getting the right information that is scientifically accurate, non-judgmental, and age-appropriate, and is complete in a carefully phased process from the beginning of formal schooling is something from which all children and young people can benefit from. So um, getting the right information that is accurate and non-judgmental is something that everyone can get get. get a lot of benefits from the in the absence of this children and young people will often receive conflicting and sometimes damaging messages from their peers the media or other sources good quality sexuality education balances this through the provision of correct information and an emphasis on values and relationships so that's uh, in just in relation to the concern about it being uncomfortable and awkward next up sex ed could lead uh, young people to engage in early sexual encounters. Now, that is a myth, no? because according to studies, research from around the world clearly indicates that sexuality education rarely, if ever, leads it uh, um, teaching or talking about this discussion in class or in schools actually rarely leads to early sexual initiation. Sexuality education can lead to later and more responsible sexual behavior or may have no discernible impact on sexual behavior even. That's just for the information here. Some might not be open about it, um, might be closed off, but I do encourage everyone not to listen as well 
because as mentioned, um, young people can benefit from the discussion. Um, so, and then the the concern about being about the topic being bastos. So, in that sense, thank you for pointing that out. Um, as mentioned, no, this is part of uh, being human. Um, our sexuality is part of uh, our of the human person in general. So, um, whether whether that be sooner or later, we are going to engage in in relationships with other people, no? And with that, um, that is an, an integral part of being a person because. Um, because we know we are sexual beings as well, um, human humans in general. So with that, let's not look at it in a in a um, in a, what's the term there in a basto sense, but instead we shall look at this as an important um, aspect of an of education or in the formation of a person that can really help us now. So. Thank you. Some answers as well that have come in. It's a contentious topic. So curious about this these aspects. It could it could be a joke towards others as well. So notab notable. And yes, that's it. It's just made as a joke for others and not taken seriously. So thank you for your responses. We, we can. And now I'll start with the outline of the topic. All right. So for this week and next week, we shall go through the following topics in class, and I shall also give the class some reading to do uh, during the asynchronous uh, parts of the lesson. So here, first off, we shall discuss about an overview of adolescent and teenage sexual and reproductive health in the Philippines. Excuse me. So. Um, looking through, I know that most of us are actually teenagers and or you, most of you are teenagers and even young adults already now. So adolescents might, might not be really included in in who you are. I mean, adolescence is 13 to 15, 12, 11 to 15. So let's just maybe look at um, teenage sexual and reproductive health in the Philippines. We're done with part two. Uh, we shall also go through the circles of human sexuality. What are the aspects of sexuality that encompasses the actual notion of of sexuality? No? Then around next week, next Saturday, we shall go through values clarification. So um, particularly, what are the aspects of our own sexuality that is important or that are important for us is it important for us to um keep our keep our um our virtue no for for ourselves or is it important for us to explore and learn from um from other people as much as we can so there are no judgments whatsoever as to what is important for anyone um in the in the approach that we are going to have, although uh, us, no, or uh, although I, as your instructor, will try to guide you to um, to the to a better way of of approaching your own relationships, but um, particularly the values that you will that is important for you will be dictated by you yourself, and no no type of of um, of perspective is going to be instilled or pushed or um, I'm not going to force anyone to believe in anything but I'm just going to give the right information about for example um, for example drug use no and um, 
and uh, sexual risk as well as uh, communicating assertively as what you can see here. So those are some of the information that will be shared. So um, the last part as well will will revolve around drug use and sexual risk and communicating assertively. These are called risk reduction behaviors or um, some skills that we can learn in order for us to avoid being put in in risky situations in relation to to our relationships with others now so starting off let's start with an overview of teenage sexual and reproductive health in the philippines now in the philippines this first slide will show information about the early sexual encounters of young people in our country so in 2013 the data is actually from the department of health and the world health organization in 2013, one in three young people in the Philippines report to having premarital sex. And in particular, is this something new to us? Do you think that the statistics is that that statistic is correct? Uh, particularly, I think it is not because um, from what I know about, for example, um, some so social circles that I know of, um, and as well as the proliferation of, let's say, or rather the development of birth control nowadays, contraception, it's somehow um, not really a problem anymore no, for, for, for us to think about family planning in a way. So with that, it's not exactly the same as the generation before us wherein marriage is solely um, acceptable or it's supposed or rather sexual encounters no sex in general is just um, isolated or rather um, limited in the marriage union but um, that is that is a that's a reality that is currently happening that um many young people are engaging in premarital sex and with that um that's actually one in three young people so that's a lot no that's a relatively larger number however um i do still as in my own ano, sad class no in my own um viewpoint um i still of course respect and um i still also believe that it's really important for young people to still keep um keep it within the marriage no because um it, de it depends really on our own personal religious beliefs um however if we are not exactly adherent towards that that's also that's also the, um not a problem in any way you know so but as long as we avoid um as long as we avoid exposing ourselves to um the risks of stds for example no which is a reality later on we shall look at um, the statistics about aids and hiv in the philippines but yes um still it is quite important for especially for young people who are quite um who really have a closer relationship with their religion it's still very important to keep that um, within the confines of an of uh, marriage and it's not easy actually to to raise a child diba class because um in the sense that um family planning really is important if ever this could lead to pregnancy um premarital sex which is going to also we are going to also look through some data about that now the prevalence of early sexual encounters has increased no, in the Philippines over the last 20 years. Males are more likely to report having premarital sex than females. In 2013, 36% of males reported having early sexual encounters compared to 29% of females. Which may not be uh, something that's that because I believe that among young people, not especially among boys, uh so boys particularly often it's a it's a normal conversation sometimes among bar, boys who are uh, among friends not among, among groups of friends and 
and it's even a we don't exactly in the Philippines we don't call it like a measure of masculinity like when among young young um, boys not uh, among circles of men or of young men um uh, it, often it's somewhat like uh it's something that we talk about with our friends that hey ha, who who are you dating and um have you had sex with that person something like that so um often it's somehow a mura shag ang dili lang sa lalaki no pero pati po i i, I don't think it happens really much with with young girls or teenage girls but kuan siya ba mura bitaw ikabuga siya usahay sa mga batan-on nga nabuhat na na nila nga dili na sila virgin kung kuan pa sila kung uh, in terms of for for young men at least but for young women early sexual encounters are particularly um still important no or rather not important but um it's something that um girls try to avoid because um in our culture more bitog na ay ano na ay stigma sa babae nga sexually active which is a little absurd as well kay kuan siya or again balanced kayo nga kung lalaki okay ra pero kung babae dili pero um according to science as well class uh, there's a scientific explanation kay uh, young women also carry the burdens of child rearing if ever they do get pregnant. So, mas careful gid ang babae gyud kay ano man kanang kit ang babae man ang gadala sa kuan sa risk no higher risk if ever. Um, although dili man nato ginalanta ang pregnancy as a risk because it is often a a blessing to be to become a mother and to become a parent kay dili betanan sad nga naana nga ability no there are also some couples who are infertile pero if it's not at the right time it might when pregnancy is not at, is not done at the or it's not planned no it might be a little uh, challenging for for couples young couples or for the woman to raise her child so in that sense muna mas gamay siguro ang Ang ano sad ang um, occurrence sa uh, early sexual encounters among young females. <clears throat> if you ha if you have any thoughts about the whole discussion, um, don't hesitate to uh, ano not to ask and to share your opinion if ever there you have. I know that you have your own thoughts as well during this whole discussion. Um, moving on to the next point, the highest levels of early sexual encounters are reported in NCR with about 41% and Central Luzon with about 31%. Also, many young people marry young and it is important that they have good information before they are married so that they can make healthy, informed decisions. <clears throat> Excuse me. According to the Youth Adult Fertility and Sexuality Survey, 13.6% of girls 15 to 19 years old have begun, have begun childbearing, up from 6.3% in 2002. Now, um, although if we look at it, class, the survey actually focus ar focuses around the age groups of 15 to 19 years old. So I wanted to ask, class, what are your ages, by the way? How old are you? 18, ma'am. 18. 18. 20, ma'am. Okay, 18, 19. Thank you. Anyone else? Or less around that age group. So, um, in this particular age group, though, 15 to 19 years old, I think uh, some of you are included there, but I'm not saying that it's for it's part of the statistic no every anyone in the class of course is part of the st statistic no let's say among all of the 15 to 19 year olds in the philippines let's say that's a hundred percent ten percent of that or 13 percent have have become begun child rearing or childbearing so although it's not really a large percentage but it, there has been an increase now because in 2002 there was about 6.3 percent of uh, girls in this age group who who begun who begun childbearing, but uh, there has been almost half an increase over the last twenty or ten years. So um, early onset of sexual activity is also prevalent, and then seventeen percent of fifteen to nineteen year olds has had sex. So in that 
particular age group as well, about 17% have had sex. Then only 79% of them used contraception during their first sexual encounter. Although the, in that sense, now it's actually a larger percentage. That's actually good that 79% have used a protection during their first in sexual encounter because relatively that's a larger number, 79%. But uh, what about the other 21% no, who didn't? So it would be better if that would be higher, but still I think that's already a high percentage. Now in terms of death rates among young women who get pregnant in their teenage years, this would um, be the data about um, ma uh, maternal mortality rates. Relatively, actually, there are lower cases of, of mortality rates. When we say mortality rates, it refers to death rates. There is a lower number of young women or young teenage girls who get who who, who die during childbirth, God forbid. So be, uh, compared to older women, as what we can see here, there, um, there has been a lower number of um, deaths in... 53 per 100, 53 per 100,000 live births um, of uh, this it refers to maternal mortality rates. There are about low, a lower percentage compared to older women because um, we can note that uh, young women, uh, it's, it's, it's actually easier to give birth when you are still younger because the body of a, of a young girl or rather a young woman is is uh, made for childbirth compared to older women maybe at their at the uh, at the latter part of their 30s mona nashal is it's difficult to um have be have a baby at that age however looking at children born to mothers less than 20 years old so children born to mothers less than 20 years old have higher neonatal infant and under five mortalities than those born to older mothers so uh, referring to that we can see that um when we say under five mortalities the rate of babies or the num the number of babies who die not during the first five years of life so um for teenage mothers, there is a higher um, observation of neonatal mortalities. Maybe because during pregnancy, perhaps, either it is because of the development of the baby during pregnancy you know, that, that um, the reproductive system of the mother might not have been that, de that developed yet in a way that could affect the health of the baby. There is, there are also other factors as well during pregnancy is the young girl or rather the is the teenage girl following following some precautions that pregnant women should not be doing or are, are they taking uh, the right supplements now for the baby so those uh, matters now relating towards violence among the youth in relation to to the occurrences in our country. Now, violence is also prevalent in this age group, the age group of 15 to 19 years old. 16% of women aged 15 to 19 have experienced physical violence at least once in their life. So th um, that is also a, re a relatively, it's not really high, but still 16%, no? Um, that is a considerable number. 4.4% are survivors of sexual violence. And 17% of respondents have experienced violence in the past year as well. 23% have been aggressors of violence between the ages of 15 to 24 years old. So most of the aggressors of um, violence no, or harm done upon a person is um, from the age groups of 15 to 24. And there are about 23% coming from this age group. Almost half of 13 to 15 year old school children in the 2013 survey have experienced bullying. So bullying is a is considered to be a under violence as well as what we had learned in the lecture on gender concepts under gender violence. 
bullying as well as cyberbullying. And that's a, a huge number, no? Half of 13 to 15 year old school children. I heard from my other students that most of most bullying revolves around the um, ha -ha about some about bullying towards uh, the physical appearance of their classmates in school, particularly no. So relating to weight, so kaning um, comment about sa weight sa, sa, sa babae or the skin, the, the skin complexion, physical appearance. Um, in your experiences, class, uh, have you gone through this bullying? I know that I myself marag na jo na bully gamay sa elementary pero dugay naman sa to no yeah pero um, is that still happening in your in your um, batches? I mean, in the past when you were in high school, for example. My experience, ko mom. Mm. What what were the comments usually uh, relating to that? Kanang kwa na mam kay kanang tungod nagit mam kay dili kay kuhili ko amiga ba ba isa o na mam pa kay malibakira mo git mam yeah 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 ako na dakan yung kastorya mam so true dili kay kuhili ko mag kwan mam dili kay kuhili ko magbakada sa una ba ba isa from grade five ko mam hantog nag third year college ay third college third year high school kaya wala ko friend nga ba ba isa pero lalaki yeah so one of the boys. Yeah, mo dili ko nila ginaapil sa dili ko nila ginaapil sa mga girls nga Christmas party. Ano, lagi ko apil na. So yeah. So na ay ano kanang mag-comment lugar o ban tawo nga kani one of the boys ra kaayo. So anya. Igat na mo. No? So kana nga mga terms ba? Yeah, that's true good sa sa school. Mura siya sa sa kuan sa bakaning aning kam sa kumain gikan ni sa gossip girl betaho nga kati kayo murag mean girls nga kuan good kining um we call uh girls an ano those the derogatory terms no how about the others thank you so much Athena any other experiences Ako, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Mar yeah, yeah, Joven. Ezra, what would that be, if we may ask? Sa ako, ma'am. Ay, sa ako, ma'am. Yeah. Sa, sa ako, ma'am, part is ko ang gibuli ko kay Murag na, na, ang sanin sila, naka-feel sila og threat in terms of academic nga competition, ma'am ba? In yeah. Ana. Ko ang ka nang, sa una kay, mag uh, elementary pa na hinga tayo mga grade 4 yeah. tulong ni kabok ang ga, kuan jud mo rag ga, ga compete sa kanang in terms academically tapos kato sila duha mag ako ilang ga kafil nga threat gid kayo ba so ga make sila mo rag mga mga basta mga I don't know tactics nila nga sila ang uh, ila kong mapa down gid per me tapos like basta kato nga time kay kuan kay kung nag mut nga nam ginatabangan jud ko nila kanang ina nang kasiling mamba Oh, pato. So it's kanang kwan. So gina gina corner gina corner gid ka Joven like yes, sa like, like, like uh, gagulan gid. Oh. Ka ka di ba sa una elementary uso makina mga lista-lista sa mga tabian, mga ana. Din kanang oh. kuan ma'am kanang ila kung murabit og ipasabas kay sir nga akong naguna-una sa usa ka activity nga nasaba ang classroom. Ina na bitaw ma'am. Tapos kanang hmm. kanang kana isa po kanang di ba ilista lista mo gidana to kung kapila ka nagtindog kapila ka nagtabi daghan kay ako abi sa wala ko ibuhat din wala di ba sa daan na lang pud nako din ato mo gilak-gilak nang pugos ona kay sempre bata pa man ina na oh thank you Joven Ezra what was yours um way back in senior high school mom kay I was bullied sa akong appearance mom and ang nakalain mom yeah. because he was a, cre a cream student mom and mm. that time pinigo was when he said nga like Look, putot, putot, putot. And most of the time, yeah. the cat calls siya sa ako, ah. And that time, mm -hmm. the corner, kung mami, is dagan kayo sila ng cream, ng cream student. Is, in the first before ito, ma'am. And tato dahil yun, kaya may ganyan ako yung friend na ako natagbuan. And mm -hmm. ako siyang gingon sa akong lola. So, 
I was a minor that time and mom so na yeah. file me o ka ng violence against women and children ma'am then he was kicked out then sa school. Oh my god. Sorry to hear that Ezra. Grabe no. Na gi, gi, gilabtan ka unsa man? Wala ma'am but the corner ko sa dalan kay wala gilain gyud na tawo niya. Early pa gyud siya ma'am lunch time bitaw. Wala mm-hmm. pa ko open ako nga friend yung corner ko like kan dili sila na cream students gyud na. Mm-hmm. Thank you Ezra for sharing your experience. Um so kuan kaning kung hunaw na na to class no ko uh, I'm actually speaking in English because um I do have foreign students no in the other classes and I want them to to understand the lecture but um in our culture in the Philippines that's really a a ground level um reality no it's a reality especially in schools in elementary schools although we we often elementary and high schools no we often think that um that it's just a filipino thing but it's really it's really real no these experiences and um although we've moved on from that perhaps because uh, you guys are already in college but still um how about if we actually discuss about bullying and viol and is it a type of violence yes no kay um sayonan ka kung if we were called slutty if you were called um uh, if if you were cornered and treated unfairly in school that is already a violation of uh, who you are as a person no although sometimes kay uh, why do we um we wonder why that happens to us but there are people exactly i'm not i'm not saying that uh, yeah there are people really who would do those acts to others and um perhaps out of jealousy out of spite out of um particularly in the sense in the case of Ezra what do you think w- could ha- could be the motivation behind that maybe it's just plain harassment no plain harassment that there that that really happens so if we were the victims of bullying ourselves we can we should know that the first step would really be to acknowledge nga that is already bullying and it is it is that it can affect us no so the second step after acknowledgement would be to seek help to seek support and then ju- um it's just it's good that Ezra filed for filed against that student no so that that student was able to um to get a punishment of course for that for that act because it's it's also or it's actually a i think as a high school kay naama na siya kuan kining hatol sa sa manners i'm not sure if it's manners discipline so kana siya nga aspect sa sa elementary ug high school no kay magsugod magin na sa bata pa siguro class no basin siguro nga sa ila pung kuan sa iyang background kay basing ning dako siya og aning environment nga gasayon sa yunon lang ang mga uban tawo nga harassment sa ganang gakaharas po merg ma, ma, ma observe na nila sa ilahang environment silang friends so abi nila okay lang pero it's not okay and i know that there are there are already programs in elementary and high school against anti-bullying and um and uh kids no particularly should know that there are consequences towards these actions but usually example sa kana mag magsaway o ganing when when other young people are kani bitong gisaway sa gigamit atong derogatory term na na share ni ni Athena ganina kaning ignan kag igat ka dili man ni mo isumbong gid usually sa lain or sorry sorry about that experience as well Athena but i'm sure that ana magid ana magid sad no na magid mga there are really um we really are there we really are often um there are some circles of friends that we have that um that we we connect more to and doesn't mean that we should be called names because of that and with Joven's experience as well na um gina gina pasanginlan so um maybe if this if dili sad na to ginasumbong kaayo but you have the choice not to to tell against that 
to tell that to your teachers and to the disciplinarian prefect of discipline of the school okay um that's not exactly good as well no so in, that's re in relation to bullying and it's a it's a common occurrence as what we had learned in the powerpoint about 47 percent of young people have been bullied so in terms of cyber bullying as well 4.8 percent of adolescents have been harassed using technology <clears throat> So just some quick facts about HIV AIDS in the Philippines. Let's uh, proceed to HIV AIDS. Now, now HIV and AIDS is, uh, AIDS stands for autoimmunodeficiency syndrome, which refers to an illness that targets the immune system of a person. And it is, transmis it is transmitted through um, unsafe sex, no? sharing of needles, as well as um, uh, no, um, mother to child transmissions. So um, young uh, women who live with HIV could pass down the virus to their children if ever they get pregnant no, um, after contracting or after being infected with um, AIDS. So um, particularly, um, some of the symptoms of the illness would start with since it is a it is a, an illness or a disease that's that targets the immune system of a person often symptoms do not really show up early when once um infection the infection has has been has infiltrated the uh, person's body now but um some symptoms would include fever and then particularly um the immune system of the person we shall look through a video about AIDS. AIDS stands for Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome, which means deficient immune system. You get AIDS after becoming infected with the HIV virus. You get infected with the virus by unsafe sex, contact with blood of an infected person, for example by using a contaminated injection needle, from mother to child during pregnancy, childbirth or breastfeeding because the virus is transmitted through blood, sperm, vaginal fluids, pre-seminal fluid, breast milk. You don't have the risk of becoming infected with the virus by saliva or shaking hands. When you have HIV virus but aren't symptomatic yet, you are seropositive. That means that there are HIV antibodies in your blood. You don't need to have any signs of disease yet. An HIV infection passes through four stages. In the first stage, the body can show signs of disease like continuous fever and swollen glands. While some people who are infected remain asymptomatic in their first stage. In the second stage, recurring airway infections, skin, mouth and genital lesions often occur. In the third stage, you may have complaints like prolonged diarrhea, excessive weight loss, tuberculosis in the lungs, and other serious infections like meningitis. Finally, besides serious infections, the nervous system may be affected in the fourth stage, which can result in motor loss or AIDS-related dementia. It may take five to 15 years before you know that you've got AIDS. This is because sometimes it takes longer for symptoms to occur. HIV and AIDS can be treated with medication but can't be cured. Antiretrovirals slow down the multiplication of the virus but doesn't kill it. 
To support the treatment, AIDS patients often get medications to boost the immune system and fight against infections. You can prevent AIDS by having safe sex and using clean needles. Okay, so um, particularly the AIDS, um, it's actually acquired immune, acquired immune deficiency syndrome. So um, some of the symptoms really include fever, lesions, and then a discharge, no, this discharge or discharge in the sex organ, and then. Um, the lungs as well, auto or rather the respiratory tract is is targeted, um, meningitis, and then uh, particularly dementia even at the latter part of the of uh, the stage uh, stage four of the illness. So, um, accordingly, there is already treatment for AIDS actually not from. Uh, that was founded in India and Indonesia and then um, adopted in the United States. But still, in the Philippines, treatment for AIDS is not exactly that uh, sophisticated. And particularly, treatment is still quite, uh, no, no, quite um, it's often a privilege for some who could afford the treatment for AIDS. Now, in the Philippine context, if we also refer to the to, to the information in the video, it's surprising that even with just one, uh, uh, if we or if a person fails to use protection, no, and maybe if they if their partner if their sexual partner has AIDS, then that could have a repercussion for the rest of a person's life if ever they do get infected with a disease, God forbid, no. Um, just one small mishap could be could have a lifetime consequences or a co lifetime consequence. So um, particularly we did see that to avoid it or uh, it's always important to practice safe sex now. And um, in the Philippines, the reported cases, as we can see here, this was the data in 2017, that in 2017, during this time period or during the following months only, we'll just focus on the information in the first and second columns. A total of 3,290 cases were reported in January to April 2017 alone. And in April 2017, there were about 629 cases of AIDS in the Philippines. So that's a, lo a lot, actually, if you think about it, just within one month, no? 629 cases. Then um, among the various sexes, males were particularly... Um, and, uh, there were a high, higher number of cases among Filipino men with 3,131 in January to, to April 2017 and 596 in April 2017. Among females, there were about 159 cases in this time period and then 33 cases in April 2017 alone. The age group that that had a higher the highest recording of HIV among Filipinos were the age group of 25 to 43 year olds with about 1,653 cases from this age group. Then um, the, the number of pregnant women living with HIV was 21, 21 women in, in this time period and then six women in April 2017. The number of reported deaths of HIV in the Philippines was about 172 in the first four months of 2017. So that's actually a lot now if we consider the, the, the four month period. And then there were 17 deaths in April 2017. That is also a larger number considerably. So therefore class, we really see that um, in Cagayan de Oro even, I think pre-COVID uh, there, has been also uh, 
a number of reported cases of HIV in CDO. So um, it's really important not for for everyone to know about the data because uh, particularly this uh, really reiterates the importance of um, using protection if ever a person is sexually active. Now, the modes of transmission, the modes of transmission among children and adolescents, um, majority of the modes of transmission of HIV is uh, between males and males, no? male and male sex, or me men having sex with men, or MSM, we call it MSM. In graduate school, everyone, um, I went to graduate school around uh, the last few years, uh, a few years ago. Now I was in graduate school. I took up uh, sociology, master's in sociology in Xavier. And one of my classmates during one of our classes in in our majors was, uh, he gave a, a report about HIV in the Philippines. And in the data, he noticed that the reason why there is a higher rate of MSMs or males having sex with males, um, MSM um, cases, is because of um, the fact that between same-sex couples, accordingly, huh, um, it's actually a a manner of showing trust between the couple that if they do not use protection accordingly um, during sex, though. It's a way to show now if you trust me, then we do not use protection. But that's the type, that's the actual type of thinking that actually leads to to the risk of getting HIV. So um in any case, no, a lot of uh people who are living with the illness um also has to go through treatment for to through lifetime treatment. Um, hence it's really important to as mentioned earlier, no, to um, lessen the risk of, uh, of contracting the illness. So um, other data here, the other statistic, as you can see, 23% of transmissions are sex with both males and females. 7% is uh, in relation to mother to child transmissions. So in the Philippines, key populations include people who inject drugs, men who have sex with men, transgender, and sex workers. But it's important for these groups to, to have access to programs that help them learn how to protect themselves against HIV and to ensure that they have good access to HIV testing and counseling services and treatment options where needed. Our particular city health office in Cagayan de Oro, located in JR Borja, um, JR Borja going to Cogon Market, the city health actually does have a health program for HIV patients, or rather a health program to counsel um, the particular key populations here in order to educate them about protecting themselves against HIV. So um, lastly, in relation to learning about sex and reproduction, this is not related to AIDS anymore, but in terms of a new topic, which is um, where young people prefer to learn about sex and reproduction. It is uh, said here that uh, respondents prefer to learn about sex and reproduction from friends of the same sex. About 60% prefer learning from friends, medical professionals, and their own mother. Half of females would like to learn about sex and reproduction from their own mother, and the corresponding proportion for males is only about 18.5% who want to learn from their parent. So um, that would be the discussion so far for for today, Tasna. Um, are there any thoughts or questions at this point? Can we ask some students to share about their thoughts now for the day? Let's look through here. Can okay, we have Kobe? Just to have a, a balanced number of students to share now. Uh, what were your thoughts, guys? Yes. Ay, kwan siya, insightful siya regarding sa kwan 
regarding kanang sexual kanang STD in general and concerned ma'am ang awareness sa isa ka active ang sexually active population within the Philippines mabugang overall demographic ma'am Thank you Kobe so in, it was informative thank you Um just curious no can we have Miss Cesar if uh, IV is still there? Ah, oh, wala na si IV. Okay. How about let's look through the class list. Phoebe, Miss Ortega. I'm worried about that. See, Phoebe. Or, uh, yeah, nah, ah, Tora. Oh, okay, noted. How about Rosalind? Miss Querquez. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Oh, what were your thoughts during the whole morning discussion? Uh, it's good, ma'am, nga ko an ka ng. Um, ang sexual or reproductive health sa Philippines kay ginatakol o ang mga demographics kay kinakuan gitu siya ko ng base gitu siya sa sa people na naka-experience na and that's all it's not Okay, so it's good that we tackled about uh, the data as well. Okay, um, particularly that would be just our initial discussion class. Not next week we shall discuss about circles of human sexuality as well as um, values clarification and drug and sexual risk and and communicating assertively. So starting off with the discussion on circles of human sexuality. So last time, so um, the discussion here is from the resource from the UNES, from the United Nations now, your training on a comprehensive sexuality education for East and Southern Africa. And as what we had discussed last time, so sexuality basically not this is the central central um topic that we are discussing for the month and as we know sexuality is an inherent part of being human and is something that we experience every day beginning even before we are born within the womb and extending until we die and um connecting it as well to our discussions last meeting we learned that overall it's essential for us to discuss this because um, it is part of getting to getting or rather creating our own anana identity, sexual orientation, gender identity, and expression. Also, um, often our our gender identity might not be something that we have thought about that much, or maybe it is, depending on our individual experiences, but we can all benefit from learning about sexuality, from learning that, oh, so my sexuality isn't exactly just about who I am attracted to, but it also is related to how I, how I see myself, how I also treat other people, and what would be my, my plans now going forward um, as a young person in terms of creating a family, for example, although I'm sure that you guys might not be thinking about that uh, at early, as early as now, but um, that is still part of the discussion on sexuality. Can I ask, guys, did, you, did we already discuss about the circles? I think we did, Diva. Right? I remember we might have already started talking about sexuality, no? Yes, ma'am. And intimacy. Na naman ta, Diri? Yes, ma'am. Good. I think Diri ta nag-end sa intimacy, sa mga dumduman. So, um, as a review, 
And you might have already started off with reading about the topic now from the materials as well as um, in starting off your projects. So there are five circles of human sexuality. Um, that is sensuality or the awareness, acceptance of and comfort with one's own body, intimacy relating to so sensuality is the more physical aspects of sexuality, whereas intimacy pertains to emotional closeness with other people. Next is sexual identity, the development of our sense of a sense of who we are sexually, including a sense of maleness and femaleness, sexual health and reproduction, and then sexualization. So let's skip through intimacy now and we'll go to sexual identity today we're done with this already sharing caring liking or loving another person risk-taking and vulnerability okay so we'll just have intimacy but uh, I, I mean I think I remember we're done with the first uh, circle that is inequality so uh, continuing on, now intimacy is the second circle of human sexuality, aside from the physical aspects mentioned in sensuality. Um, intimacy is the ability to be emotionally close to another human being and to accept closeness in return as well. So emotional closeness, whether that be with our family, not our friends, our boy, a boyfriend or a girlfriend, so that is essentially part of human sexuality. Now there are several aspects of intimacy. First would be sharing. So would you agree that the more you share experiences with a sibling or with your family, with your friends, with your significant other, the more our emotional closeness with them grows, right? So think about the last um, hang out you had with your friends for the last date you went on or maybe you haven't exactly gone out anymore because you've been at the home no kani bitong delikado no ba magawas current class na ke gara rais na gidang cases sa covid sa cdo and um, if you're far away from cdo maybe it's the same case in your area so however let's say the last hang out you had with your friends, no? I think it's better sometimes to, to, so often our emotional closeness develops with other people if we spend time or uh, experiences with them. No? For example, like um, going traveling, not traveling with friends or uh, trying a new activity like sports, for example. Or when you are with a significant other, for instance, sharing an experience with them such as trying a new um, a, a new restaurant, grabe restaurant, yun. Or kanya may tamo rin mag-trip mag lang mo, mga tumuog, um, dagat, char, <laughs> mga yan, <laughs> drink, mga <laughs> date, mag-vacation, <laughs> or kanya mag, mag meal tea mo, uban mo, mag-tanaw mo, ukuan, ay, mag-tanaw sini. So, ayan na, no, sharing experiences, but also sharing your own, your own viewpoints, perhaps, during conversations. So that's a way of forming intimacy now with others, sharing as well your what makes you happy, what are the things that challenge you. So sharing intimacy is what makes personal relationships rich, while sensuality is about physical closeness, intimacy focuses on emotional closeness. So that's important. So maybe we can think about like, are there any people that are doing are we sharing ourselves with others in terms of our lives na dili man siya nga kanang sa isa ka aspect lang pero um that's a part of the of being uh be, being a human person in general na, that we share with others because man is essentially social although it depends po kay na uba nga introvert na ganahan lang na sa sila ila lang na pero still even if we are introverted there, we still connect with other people. Man, sa dili lang di kayo parehas na ng extroverts na sa gawas di kayo magkua o ano na um, uh, attention. And that attention, but more on connection with others. 
mga introverts kaya pwede rin magyapon nga pa ng sa close people lang, di lang gataghan, no? makip close. Now going to caring, caring about others means feeling their joy and their pain. So it's somewhat like if we care about our family, for example, we go out of our way to to help them when they are going through something, or if it's with not with someone we are with, not we get show we really take action to show our appreciation towards them. It means being open to emotions that may not be comfortable or convenient because an intimate relationship is possible only when we care. So for instance, if we're not, yeah, it means being open to emotions that may not be comfortable or convenient. Uh, case in point would be, for example, now, um, let's say, I'm not sure if I've mentioned this before, um, can you tell me, class, ha, if na discuss na nato ni siya ng mga toxics ko, pwede ko repeat, pero, like, um, for example, let's say, looking at our parents, no? So, if you are close to your parents, or if the other way is, or is the case, kanang naiuban na dili close ang parents, pero naiuban families, no, nga, ang, ang parents, kay grabe, kay ka, ka, Gabi mag go out of our of their way ang parents kaya para maka provide lang sa sa bat sa atua or sa yung sa ilang children so for instance kini bitaw mo matagi nung sayo ang imong parents kaya para maka cook para sa inyuha or um, for example um, Ma ihatod sa kuan, ihatod ang ano na ang anak or magpalit o kung sa kailangan nun. So that's a form of caring. No? Um, although, even though diligid kaayo siya, happy man sa ang atong, ang atong parents na mag-show o care, but that's also their way of showing how much they love us no? or they love you. Next is liking or loving another person. So intimacy also refers to the love that we share now with other people or liking someone so let's say for example for for same sex couples for example no or can it or the lgbt perhaps it would be at a very young age perhaps now for a, for an lgbt person they would like us the same sex no for instance kung kanang mga crushes that is part of Sexuality essentially, no? Crushes or loving another person, liking, having that emotional attachment or connection to others is a manifestation of intimacy. And that those feelings can also be taken into account as to who we are attracted to, which is closely linked to gender identity. But on another level, uh, intimacy also is part of, or ra rather, liking or loving another person is always part of that intimacy. No? For risk taking, so um, yes, risk taking. No? Let me see. So to have true intimacy with others, a person must open up and share feelings and personal information about them themselves to other people. So. Uh, okay, I, I saw an interesting um, clip class in YouTube uh, recently. Ko anto siya 9:48 ba ang alan at tong show? Not sure if I can still show it to you, no. Pero okay, I'll try to show it to you para makita taga may ukoan kana. Dati ay makita ang gamay ng content karon ng afternoon, no. But uh, I think we are going to be able to finish everything in any case in class today. So this um, this show that I'm going to show you is from a Bisaya um, channel. If, if you're familiar with Godong Dave and Malaya Makaraig in Cebu, kinsa familiar ni nila? <laughs> Na ano sila sa, C sa Cebu actually. So wala ka ayo sa to akas. Ano na kahiring ani? Na familiar mo? Dili kayo. Yes. Dili kayo ma. Yes ma. So kani sila class kay ko anish sila kani mura sila channel sa uh, channel ni sila sa YouTube na um, 
nasa Limorog series dito. Pero tsada siya pagka-produce. 647 day ang alan sa show. And yeah, kaninga show, it's just... It's just like a boy meets girl story, but what's in, what's familiar or rather what's interesting about one of the episodes there is kung siya na kini reservation ang isa sa ilaha. There there's a guy named Dave and then there's a girl named Malaya. Pero si Malaya medyo reserved siya dili siya gusto nga kaning maki date ane yung Dave na bito plus ito what is it? Malaya na hurt na siya sa past. Oh, na yung mga yan, ang drama, no? So, kanibit ang matanaan na ito ng ilang gihisugutan nila sa koan sa ilang um, sa isa, isa sa mga episodes. Taas pa niya siya. Dili, punta dili lang kayo ni Taas. Sige, ako i-share class, ha? So in this episode, basically explain man sa koan. Ako lang skip ang scenes, pero I explain siya sa so good and then mo jump the taning scene nga nagkoan sila na nagmura sila na naklinaro hay sila sa ilahang mga gibati about sa na na sila si koan gamay ng argument. Yeah, it will relate a little to risk taking. Na why would Malaya not want to? Uh, go out with Dave. Why don't you take the risk with me? Nga, na lang ayon story yon. So let's go look through. Previously on six. So our show class is six forty seven. Our title. And na asa sa yah Facebook. Forty seven. Oh, kau dah setahun nak di so ganahan sa kaniya. Oh, ganahan sa as a friend. Pork chop niya te, kana way tambok. Pork chop ngaway tambok. Ala loading ang ko an. Okay, try na to nga. Okay, basically class kay nagkuan sila. They just basically went out lang and then at the end of the of ano at the end kay medyo bitaw kaning sige nag uban ni si Dave kung malaya and like it's somewhat like na na uncomfortable na uncomfortable lang si malaya kay kuan it's as if mar na nai ga assume na si Dave pa ng sila na sumaryan na bitaw sa class kanan ko aning last na part lang stas mo din nga si nila here Uh, Forty-seven. Oh, no. mm -hmm. <laughs> so if pulse me, tawag mo ni Dere. Can I... Can I study? Can I study? Can I study? No, I mean... Can I study also? Okay. What's up, man? I'm going to get over it last night. How? I'm going to get over it. Last night. No, I mean... What's up, man? What's up, man? Ang nitinis ko si Mordtang. Ano dito? Para ni Muno, Murag. 
Pili na ko, okay ra. Pero para na ko, big din bitaw kayo ito na ko, Dave. Yung mong feeling siguro ron ba kay Murag, okay na na ko, nga deeper ang level sa itong connection. Tinood man nga, deeper na ang level sa itong connection, pero... Ang but eh. Ito ako kasabot sa kong na-feel. May, sorry if nalain ka itong gibuhat mo nga, pero... It was just a harmless kiss. Harmless kiss. Pero parang ako din no daghan na kay itong meaning. Siguro gay expect ka nga tabdarag kita ng duha nga obliged na kunin mo. Dili sad may eh, grabe sad. It was just a kiss to show you nga ganahan ko nimo. That's it. That's it. Dayon magkakita ni kahuman manggawas ang mga di na ko ganahan dahil masakit na sad ko. <laughs> Dave, sorry ha, pero don't take this the wrong way pa. Nai-reason nga nung single pa ko karon. And dili pa na ko kaya isugal akong kawalingon para sa usa ka tao nga nagpa-cute na ko kilid sa dan. I mean like, oh, sige. Cute ka, butan ka, pero ana mo ginata ng lucky ron, di ba? Siyempre, magpa-good shot, job ka. Kay nanguyab, babaya ka. Pero ego man, it goes downhill from there. Grabe sad may eh. Was just one forehead kiss. Nothing else. Sorry if nakalitan ko. I guess impossible na kayo ko when it comes to you. Pero sa madinan ako nga, every time makakita ko ni mo nga muhayag akong adlaw. Sa mabuto-buto akong kasing-kasing. May. Sige may anak. May take na lang ka sa risk, May. Take things with me, May. Tanda ko muhayag. I just want to take the risk and save myself from getting hurt. Rather than taking the risk and knowing uh, sooner or later, masakitan na dito. All over again. Ouch. Okay, so mauto siya nga itong atong tanaw na scene no, na nakatungalin niya. Ako na siyang stop class. Uh, it's better not to take the risk and not get hurt than to take the risk and be hurt all over again. So, kana gid sa class no, na gid na nga aspect sa intimacy nga ma, na uh, in, individuals no, or people are afraid to take that risk in sharing who they are towards other people because um, or rather to love back, to love people back because we're not sure if if um, the other person might um, might uh, take care of our feelings or not, no. However, uh, that fear, no, that fear is. I think no, it is essentially kato magusto story nila kasi sincere kito si si Dave kato sa ilang story niya. Kwa na siguro ang part ang naka. Uh, I think the problem there was that on the side of the girl, dili lang git kaya siya gusto nga mo share sa iya ang feelings na kay tungod sa experience sa past, which is totally understandable. However, we cannot exactly have, or we cannot exactly create that intimacy with someone else. Dili to wala to no nag move ang ilang relationship actually. But I think sa sa ano, um, I think eventually wala pa new episodes pero. Eventually, I think na kapo reconnect ra maya punto silang dua pero ano siya? You cannot exactly have that intimacy with someone else if you're afraid to be hurt, no? So in a way, it's always somewhat like a gamble to also allow someone else into your life, no? And um, to share feelings and personal information. So that's always part of intimacy. So sharing personal thoughts and feelings with someone else is risky because the other person may not feel the same way, but it is not possible to be really close with another person without being honest and open with her or him. So it's it's always important for us to share, um, to, to be honest about who we are and to, to be open towards others. No? It doesn't have to be with someone romantically connected to us. It can also be with friends no? or our families. So that's risk-taking. Closely related to risk-taking is vulnerability. 
to have intimacy means that we share and care like like our love and take emotional risks and that makes us vulnerable the person with whom we share about whom we care and whom we like or love has the power to hurt us emotionally as well but intimacy requires vulnerability on the part of each person in the relationship so this is something that um that really depends on our journeys no? right now social distancing but I think na ako magyapo yung mga dynamics na mahita po sa atua in terms of let's say sa sa atua ano sa in terms of our friends for example or what not. But still, vulnerability it will really depend on how much you also want to share. No, wala man ashe po sa nai na ipubus ni mga vulnerable ka pero it also will will equate to how intimate your relationships are. So if wala na siya ng vulnerability, maybe kakasayang lang ang ang kuan opportunity nga ma in depth ang um, relationships sa uh, nimo sa lain tao so why not try lang to also show that level of vulnerability no? that's for the second circle let's now go to the third circle if you have any um, things that you want to share you can also just um, say so na i would encourage you that okay so the next circle is sexual identity so this is closely linked to the chapter in the book on Soji 101, which was also another reading that I asked the class to go through. It's located in the book. So sexual identity is a person's understanding of who she or he is sexually, including a person's sense of their gender. So sexual identity consists of three pieces. These are sexual identity or rather gender identity, um, gender identity refers to how we create our own idea of who we are and our identity as people, as a, as a guy, as a girl, or as a transgender, LGBT. Gender role and sexual orientation. Gender role um, relates to the expectations that are expected of us um, and how we should behave in accordance to our gender. And then sexual orientation is who we are attracted to. So uh, some aspects of sexual identity include the uh, first is bias. So gender bias means holding stereotyped opinions about people according to their gender. Gender bias might include believing that women are less intelligent or less capable than men, that men who cry are weak, that men cannot raise children without the help of women, that women cannot be analytical, that women are overly emotional. So many times, it's related to ato ang discussions of gender equality. Many times, people hold fast to these stereotype opinions without giving rational thought to the subject of gender. So in terms of our sexual identity, often what hinders a person, uh, let's say, what is, think of an experience na to nga kining, Na, na, na stereotype ta na nga na dapat ang actions na to. So rather similar sa tong discussion sa whole sa, in the last few lecture videos. Um, sometimes a person can can be can be tong, some people do not really adhere to the norms or to the com, to the dili, dili mo conform ang tao sa unsay gina expect sa society ng buhato nila. So a case in point would be, kana siya nga, um, for instance, let's say sa in here, you know, that men who cry are weak. Na sometimes um, we might be surprised if medyo emotional ang lalaki, o niya ato din sila i-label nga nga na somewhat feminine sila, pero dili man no, kay that's just a bias as to your sexual identity just because a person is um, emotional that a guy is emotional doesn't mean uh, um koan sila uh, dili sila tinood na man no? that that's not masculine so those are some examples that the women cannot be analytical or overly emotional so in in the creation of our own sexual identity um it's okay to it's okay now we can tell ourselves that it's okay not to adhere to the to the to the norms of society in a way okay it's okay for me to be emotional or it's it's, it's okay for me as a woman to be strong no? 
or to be into manly stuff. Or for example, if we can refer to, if you're familiar with Angie Medking class, um, husband of Joey Medking, familiar Manila? Not much. So, um, Angie Medking is actually a transgender um, in the Philippines. If I can just refer to maybe Google na lang ako na lang i-Google na. Yeah, so this, these are, this is um, Angie and Joey. So, kuan si Angie o si Joey, asa man ang nice na photo. Um, here. So yeah, this is um, Angie Medking and Joey Medking. Joey Medking is actually a model, no? a former model, but uh, she was a host, one of the panelists or model mentors in Asia's Next Top Model. And she is she was married to Ian King, but Ian um, came out as transgender. Transgender refers to a person who is who changes their another their, their gender or their sex because they feel like um, their identity, their sexual identity, or their biological body doesn't exactly conform to who their sexual identity is. So eventually, when Ian transitioned and became Angelina, no, she, um, she trans uh, she transitioned to become a woman, but still they are still together, no? Because um, overall, see Angie, no? Angie still is is attracted to women, and Joey really loves um, Angie or rather Ian because of their strong love for each other. Um, she couldn't, or Joey doesn't couldn't really imagine her life without Ian in a way, no? or Angie because she's now Angie now. So that's uh, their unique relationship, and it's actually a really beautiful uh, no, class um, relationship that they have. It's uh, really still founded on the love of marriage, you know, that love that is found in marriage. That um, it's you you find someone who is your life partner, for example, uh, for the rest of your life, and uh, once you find that person, you love them for who they are now. Um, so. In relation to bias, for example, back to sexual identity, sometimes um, some relationships or some people do not exactly conform to the norm, and it doesn't mean uh, that you cannot really live your truth. So, as what I may have already mentioned, or not, no, what's important is when we form our sexual identity, we we really stay true to ourselves. That if we are for a girl, for example, no, if we are more homeboyish, if we don't exactly like um, girly things, then and then we cannot exactly force ourselves to like what we don't like. No? So it's really important to stay true to ourselves um, and find people who can support us or support you, for example, in you, in your own formation of your own sexual identity. So that's for. Um, bias, gender identity, and it's quite an empowering message, class, not to know that you don't exactly have to conform, that you can be yourself, no, and still be, as uh, still be, um, a, a, wo a woman or a guy, still be considered as as a, a guy or a wo girl, no, regardless if you conform to society standards or not. Now, in relation to gender identity, knowing whether one is female, male, neither, or somewhere in between, this refers to gender identity. Most young children have a sense of their own gender identity by as early as age two. Sometimes the sex a person is assigned at birth is not the same as their gender identity. This is called being transgender. So I can show a lot of examples, actually, in society. No? There are, I saw, if you can refer to the channel in National Geographic called Gender Revolution or a playlist in National Geographic called Gender Revolution, uh, there are a set of videos there because National Geographic also featured a, an article or a whole, a whole um, issue for Nat Geo magazine on gender a few years back. 
and in those stories there were a lot of stories about um, transgender na, ano, uh, teenagers in America who there was an interesting story of a twin or a, a pair of twins and then one of the pair of guy twins now but one of the twins um, transitioned as a woman and she got her, her operation for her sex change and then um, but overall she really felt that that was very liberating for her no ma, ma ano siya ka ng, she can really transition 100% to to who she really believed who she was good and um, another would be like there were also other you know, stories in the, in there about children who also had their own gen gender identity as well na, na transition put into you know, children or rather into a not a small boy na, summer camp that's still in the National Geographic story na, or um, playlist Ito isa ka story sa isa ka boy nga, um, who, who, who went to ano, who went to a summer camp every summer um, however the next year the, that little boy transitioned as a girl na, and then when she when she went to the summer camp as a girl already she or, or rather the administration really helped her in in her transit or in her adjustment not the administration of the summer camp basically informed the other parents that their children were were going to bunk bed with um that the girl uh, that um little girl who transitioned into a girl no? and then they said something interesting they said that it, would children really already know their own gender identity at, at six years old? Okay, six years old, pag ito ang bata. And then she said, they said that children already have an idea of their gender identity as early as two or three years old, that they would know that they are a guy or a girl, or otherwise they would have an idea of, of who they want to be as early as that age. So whatever that ch the child feels in their heart as to who they are, that should be supported at least pero at least in in america that's how they think but there's uh, that's how they believe class because um there these are different cultures as well no maybe in our country that would be something that is still debatable but uh, still for their perspective looking at different perspectives they do, um but i think that's also quite true psychologically in our in our class or in theories of the gender development now we learned that psychologically children can form an, an, an a gender identity as early as two or three years old so that is actually scientifically based so um, that's just in relation to gender identity but for straight guys straight girls um gender identity might not exactly be something uh, some somewhat of a big deal for us we, like we know already that we are um that we are straight or or yeah we are straight not so that's the idea sometimes people use the acronym lgbt to refer to lesbian gay bisexual and transgender transphobia is a term that refers to the negative feelings about and actions towards transgender people which can lead to a feeling of, de of being devalued and safe and isolated transphobia also affects the person who holds the bias and hatred because it narrows and limits the ways in which they can interact with and enjoy other people next is gender role so gender role in relation to, to sexual identity uh, refers to identifying actions and or behaviors for each gender. So most gender roles are socially, culturally constructed as what we had discussed in lesson one of the semester. So gender concepts. There are many rules about what men and women can, should do that have nothing to do with the way their bodies are built or are built or function. This aspect of sexuality is especially important for adolescents to understand since pressures from peers, family, and culture to be masculine or feminine increase during the adolescent years. So still related to sexual identity. Sexual orientation is a person's sexual a person's sexual orientation is defined by their primary attraction of people of the other gender or to the same gender or to both for bisexuals. No? Sexual orientation begins to emerge by adolescence. Mm -hmm. 
In relation to sexual orientation, this is in relation to, ano, no, to the LGBT. Homophobia is a term that refers to negative feelings about the actions towards gay, lesbian, and bisexual people, which can lead to feeling devalued. We've mentioned this already. Men who are attracted to women and women who are attracted to men are called heterosexual. So let's look at this latter part. People who feel attraction for others where gender is not necessarily the defining factor might call themselves bisexual or pansexual. Often there are also some people class you know, that don't exactly um, re don't really um, care if the, if who they are attracted to are male or female. What's important is their um, is their connection with that other person. If you're if you've heard of some news no, about uh, what I'm about to share, it, but, uh, Miley Cyrus herself was also. Um, actually identified herself as pansexual, meaning that um, wherever, what, where gender is not necessarily the defining factor on who they are attracted to. Now, some people who are LGBT will use the term queer, although when that term is used by heterosexual people to describe them, it is considered offensive. Different countries will have different laws relating to sexual orientation and gender identity ranging from completely open, affirming and accepting to violent opposition that results in serious human rights violations, physical harm and even death. Which is quite true no? in the Philippines, um, in our communities, uh, even to a degree with our parents and our grandparents. I think that um, the older generation are not exactly are not exactly accepting towards the LGBT. Um, for example, I know some family members of mine class who are still quite homophobic to a degree, um, still using the de degrading words towards the LGBT. So in our generation, that is not, that's not exactly the case because we are, I think the, this generation is more open towards other genders. Pero naapag yung mga older mga adults mga Dealing on homophobic, but I think that's changing um, with with campaigns uh, by the LGBT, with stories like Angie Med King, the uh, Angie and Joey that I showed earlier. Uh, they share about their life, you know, and other people begin to understand. Um, begin to understand once they learn about the stories of the LGBT. So that's for the, the third circle, sexual identity. Let's proceed to the fourth circle, sexual health and reproduction. So this aspect of sexuality relates to a person's capacity to reproduce and to the behaviors and attitudes that can make sexual relationships healthy and enjoyable. Now, um, I'm not sure if there are any students in this class who are already mothers or fathers, no? I'm, I'm not sure because there are some students na, um, parents na sa other classes. Na ba class? Wala mong kaayo siguro ano nga section, no? But, yeah, going back to the class, yeah. So, however, um, as what we had discussed in sexual and reproductive health, no? Um, Obviously, being sexually active can can often, more often than not, it can, of course, really, um, it can result. It's not always depending on how on whether or not the, the couple would use protection. No, but sometimes pregnancy can occur, which is a very beautiful thing, of course, for for individuals to. Or having a baby is a beautiful it is a beautiful thing as long as it's well it, whether or not it's a planned or unplanned pregnancy not it can be something that is very that can change the course of someone's life no um, but uh, there are couples for example who plan who plan their family and want to have children so in relation to sexual health and reproduction, that is still a circle, a uh, part of sexuality, not human sexuality. So the behaviors as well and attitudes that can make sexual relationships healthy and enjoyable. 
Now, um, let's start off with feelings and attitudes related to sexual health and reproduction. Feelings and attitudes encompass sexual expression and feelings about reproduction. So what are our, um, what are our attitudes about having children, for example? So that is part of sexual health and reproduction. Diba in our culture, I think particularly in our culture in the Philippines, for a, for a woman to have a baby, no, that is actually a very important aspect of our culture. Uh, that um, not just a woman, but also for a guy, that uh, as we grow older, we have this idea that, we, that people have to get married, that people have to um, have a baby. No? So that's related to sexual health and reproduction, at least for those who are already at the right age to marry. So, um, however, not everyone does want to conform to that because there are some people who want to put their careers first, who don't exactly want to, to get married or don't get, don't get married at all. No? And then there is a sort of like a stigma that is put upon them. So that's um, just in, in relation to, to feelings and attitudes. These encompass sexual expression and feelings about reproduction as well as one's feelings about other sexual topics such as STIs. So feelings and attitudes about sexually transmitted illnesses, HIV and AIDS, contraceptive use, abortion, or um, feelings about these issues, not pregnancy and childbirth. So feelings and attitudes are an important aspect of sexual health and reproduction. So in your projects, for example, you could apply that, that, that what are your feelings and attitudes about the following matters? No? You can um, include that in your in, in in identifying your feelings and attitudes about the following. Now, sexual intercourse, as mentioned, or in our discussions throughout this lesson, obviously, it's one of humanity's most common behaviors. Just sexual intercourse is a behavior that may produce sexual pleasure and that often ends in orgasm in females and males. Sexual intercourse may also result in pregnancy and or STIs. In programs for youth, discussion of sexual intercourse is often limited to the bare mention of female vaginal intercourse. However, youth need accurate health information about all forms of sexual intercourse, whether that be vaginal, oral, and anal sex. No? And um, still, in relation to these topics, so um, often as what we had discussed last meeting, we have various sources in learning about sexuality. So um, in that sense, no, um, we can read about uh, these matters from the internet or ask, it, ask from our friends no, or um, um, be experts as well on these topics, but uh, still, um, as mentioned, um, sexual intercourse is humanity's most common behaviors. And even from family, if ever we do ask about that, but often that's not exactly a topic that's discussed. But still, it's also important to have a dialogue or discussion about these matters, not because it's really part of sexuality as well. Um, physiology, physiology and anatomy of reproductive organs. So this topic includes the male and female body and the ways in which bodies actually function in sexual ways. Adolescents need to learn to protect their reproductive and sexual health. This means that they need information about all the effective methods of contraception available, how they work, where to obtain them. This is actually included in our, um, in our material class in the Google Classroom, where to obtain them, their effectiveness and their side effects, as well as how to use latex condoms to prevent STIs, including HIV. Even adolescents who have never had sexual intercourse need to know how to prevent pregnancy and or disease. So fourth, sexual reproduction, the actual processes of conception, pregnancy, delivery, and recovery following childbirth are important parts of sexuality. Youth need information about sexual reproduction, the process whereby two different individuals each contribute half of the genetic material to create a child. The child is therefore not identical to either parent, obviously. No. So in relation to 
conception, pregnancy, delivery, and recovery following childbirth. These are also important parts of sexuality. I believe there is also a section in the handout class in the classroom that also discusses about these. Then factual information, this is necessary so youth will understand how male and female reproductive systems function and how conception and or STI infections occur. Adolescents often have inadequate information about their own and or their partner's body yet they need their in these, in this information so that they can make informed decisions about sexual expression and about protecting their health. Now the fifth circle of, sexual, of sexuality is sexualization or um, that aspect of the sexuality in which people behave sexually to influence, manipulate, or control other people. So often called the shadowy side of human sexuality, sexualization spans behaviors that range from the relatively harmless to the sadistically violent, cruel, and criminal. These sexual behaviors include flirting, seduction, withholding sex from an intimate partner to punish her or him, or to get something sexual harassment, sexual abuse, rape, and incest. Adolescents need to know that no one has the right to exploit them sexually and that they do not have the right to exploit anyone else sexually as well. So first would be seduction. So this is the act of enticing someone to engage in sexual activity. So there are, in terms of sedu seduction per se, uh, we may or may not have our own experiences already in relation to seduction, no? but um, the act of seduction implies a deliberate manipulation, depriving. This is actually quite extreme if you think about it. Not all seduction is actually negative, but um, however, if ever it is used in a manipulative, manipulative way, no? seduction deprives the other person of informed choice and may be harmful for the one who is seduced. So, again, as I mentioned, this is not entirely negative per se, but if we find ourselves in a situation where seduction is being used, no, um, we should know that if ever that is the case in, uh, God forbid, no, in our experiences or in the future, we should know that we can get out of that situation and that, um, as mentioned here, no one has the right to exploit exploit someone sexually and we also have we also do not have the right to exploit to exploit anyone else sexually as well so second is sexual harassment which is a very um, common topic that is being discussed by students last night because i also have in my other classes in gender i also have students who, who express that they are harassed in ano, in public as girls for example no many so that's usual already in our culture, but it doesn't mean it's okay. And um, in many places, no, sexual harassment is actually illegal. So it means harassing someone else because of their gender, whether that is for straight guys or for the LGBT. Sexual harassment is also a form of exploitation in a way of a person, although sa atong culture, kay gina joke rasha. So it could mean making personal, embarrassing remarks about someone's appearance, especially characteristics associated with sexual maturity, such as the size of a woman's breast or a man's testicles and penis. So, kining ano plus na? I think it relates as well to bullying, no? I think that is, but sexual harassment per se, can you become, um, it's either verbal, siya na sexual harassment, na gi nag-comment about sa imulawas or um, gi, or touching, no? it could also mean unwanted touching, such as hugging a subordinate or patting someone's bottom. So that is also um, part of sexual harassment, which is not good. No? It could mean demands by a teacher, supervisor, or other person in authority for sexual intercourse in exchange for grades, promotion, hiring, raises. All these behaviors are manipulative. So in many countries, there are laws to provide protection against sexual harassment. Adolescents need to know, or young people need to know, that they, you have or you have the right to complain to authorities if you are sexually harassed, and that others may complain of their of our of someone else's behavior or if of our behavior if if uh, a person or of a person's behavior if a person sexually harasses someone else. Don't be afraid to really complain. And um, 
Although sometimes kanabi itong murang mula bay ra ka niya, murang itong iharas na kasadalan, dili masin kay ka maka-complain class na, but there is, um, but you, we can always fight back in a way no nga to bagon sila kung, kung iharas ka at, at the very least or at the most report it. Third, it's withholding sex. So this is when one partner deliberately refuses to have sex with the other person as a means of manipulating or punishing the other. Of course, anyone has the right to refuse to engage in sexual intercourse, but to do so as an act of manipulation is unfair to the partner and to the relationship. So in a way, another form of manipulation would be meaning not exactly engaging in any sexual activity just to punish someone or that is also not good. Fourth is rape. So rape, this means coercing or forcing someone else to have genital contact with another. Sexual assault can include forced petting as well as forced sexual intercourse. Force can include use of overpowering strengths, threats, and or implied threats that arouse fear in the person raped. Uh, young people need to know that rape is a human rights violation and it's never okay. Refusing to accept no and forcing the other person to have sexual intercourse always means rape. So, um, knock on wood, know that um, that this experience cannot or shouldn't be, or I hope that nobody will, of course, go through this very, very horrible experience. But still, um, individuals can always look for help, na if ever um, this this and um, this could happen to anyone, na. But um, we can also extend our help to our towards other people who are going through this difficulty. Lift, uh, fifth, or lastly, we have incest. So this means forcing sexual contact on someone who is related to the perpetrator, whether that is um, between an adult family member and a child or young person, you know, or it, or uh, most often it, it occurs between an adult family member or, or a young child or young person. It, so, Incest betrays the trust that children and youth give to their families. And this is also a, a very um, important aspect class of, of um, family in general. No, uh, um, children are innocent and, um, and the trust that children give towards their family is broken if this is, this is done towards the child. Moreover, because the older person knows that incest is usually unacceptable, they try to hide the crime and will blame the child or young person for the crime. So the triple burden of forced sexual, sexual contact, betrayed trust, and self-blame makes incest particularly damaging to survivors of incest. We can cite many stories, perhaps, or actual events that happen in the news na, and in some, some movies. Um, however, this is also part of sexuality in, in the sense that um, just for us to be informed not that there are also um, aspects about the dynamics between, between people that can be harmful as well. And um, as much as possible, we can try to avoid such risks or always report not if ever these, um, these instances happen and seek for healing through help from other people. So that's uh, basically the discussion on circles of human sexuality. Any questions from the class, sharings? None, ma'am. None so okay. far, ma'am. So if so, I'll just go through some of the points, the remaining points in the PowerPoint class. Um, I would like you to just go through the different aspects here on by your own no? because these are actually part of the project. Um, firstly, the next few topics will be on values clarification, um, communicating assertively, and then safe sex. So firstly, with values clarification, so this is just um, now that now that we have a good understanding of sexuality in addition to adult to development, no? young, person, uh, young person's development. Another key element to sexuality education is to reflect on our own values about sexuality. So to do this, let's first explore what values are. Essentially, 
um, if, when we say values, no, we have talked about sexuality already. Um, how about us? What is what are the things that are important for us? So value refers to the worth of something. What is what is of value to us? So may kaning na idako nga important sa tong kinabuhi. That is our values. And it may be easy to know which tangible things have the most value, but it can be more difficult to, to define the value of what is intangible or something that we cannot exactly see. No? So value has several meanings. Again, aside from the worth of something, value refers to the monetary worth of an object or item. That is how much something might cost or the measure of worth, such as how important things, beliefs, or principles are to an individual. So for us, um, you can, in your project class, no, kindly write down things that are valuable to you, such as, for example, tangible things and intangible things, money, your cell phone, books, gaming consoles, those are examples of tangible things. But where, what are things that are important for us no, that are intangible or non, not really relating towards things? This, this could be status, good grades, love, honesty, friendship, kindness, hard work, and talent. And why do you consider these important? You can include this in the brilliant project under values clarification. And um, however, for the brilliant project, can we also include some aspects of what are important for you in terms of sexuality? So please just base your your creation of the project from this particular handout, which was already posted in the classroom as well as in the other handout posted about the additional details now that I included in under our lesson on comprehensive sexuality education. So for values clarification, how are we able to tell what our values are? So our values are things that are, we are for or against, or um, are we for, for example, in the discussion on sexuality, are we for sensuality or is that something that we are for or against. Um, I think most often and not we could agree that everyone might might also be for intimacy you know, as long as it's in the uh, set in the right uh, right um, situation. Your values are things as well that you have chosen freely. No one else can force you to choose your values. So in your project, when you refer to your values, don't try to pretend that you are I'm not saying that I'm not saying that um, that you have to really act like or I, I will only give points for students who say that they have good values what if I'm not saying there are good or bad values it really will depend on the student but uh, whatever is important for us there will be no judgments towards what we will write in the in the journals there in the project what's important is that you yourself, Na clarify ni mong imong. There, there is a level of introspection or reflection that you have done in your own reflections on your sexuality. So your values are, are things that you believe in and are willing to stand up for. For instance, um, our values could be, for example, um, our convictions towards, let's say, if someone is overly religious, then how. Um, that, that is something that a person believes in uh, and they are willing to stand up for uh, for fo still following through with a person with their um, religious beliefs in terms of sexuality or it could also be something that a person believes in is true so that could, that doesn't exactly have to be religious no? maybe somewhat like in relation for example to um, Let's say for sexually active young people, uh, they have the right to their bodies. So that's also another thing that they believe in and are willing to stand up for. And your values guide your behavior and your life. So think, where do we get, or where do you think you get your values from? These are just some, ask, some questions that you can use in your reflection. So reflect on your own values about sexuality assess and be, become aware, more aware of your own values as well. So in the prelim project, and we also just uh, go through 
reflection on your own values about sexuality. Now, there's also an, an activity included in the material. This is already posted in the classroom, no values posting statements. So this is an activity wherein you can identify if you agree or disagree with the following. So you should only have sex with someone you love. Do you agree or disagree? When a man and women have sex, contraception is the woman, woman's responsibility. Do you agree or disagree? Um, why do you think you chose agree or disagree on the topic on the topics? There are no wrong answers, no. So issues about around sexuality can incite strong feelings driven by our values. However, personal values about sexuality and young people need Personal values about sexuality and uh, young people need to remain just that personal. Taking the time to examine one's own values is important and empowers you to become more self-aware as well. So uh, kindly just go through that class now in your um, reflections about um, sexuality. That this is actually a very important aspect of the reflection. Going on to drug use and sexual risk and communicating assertively. In this part, the, se the section will basically, or this section will basically talk about drug use, na? and it will present some myths and facts about drug use and their use, or about drugs and their use. So, some myths about drug use include alcohol is an addictive substance, not a drug. Um, the activity is kindly identify if the statement is myth, is a myth or a fact. So do you think that alcohol is an addictive substance, not a drug? Coffee and tea and many sodas contain drugs. Cigarette smoking can be addictive. Now, um, in the project, you were asked to create a scenario you now wherein um, you would communicate assertively, but that's actually for the next section. Um, di lang sa tamwato dan na ano pa na communicate assertively dere sa sa drug use. So here, um, the answers are found as well in the same slide. Actually, it's a myth now that alcohol is an addictive substance, not a drug. Alcohol is a drug as is any substance that affects the mind or body. So actually, drug is ang alcohol. Coffee, tea, and many sodas contain drugs. That's a fact. Actually, coffee, tea, and many sodas and diet sodas contain caffeine, which is a stimulant. Caffeine is addictive. Headaches are a common sign of withdrawal from coffee, tea, or many other sodas. And then there are other myths and facts here. You can read through these. So in conclusion to drug use, it's important for young people to know about drugs so that they can better understand how drug use can cause harm and affect decision-making abilities that can put them at greater risk of violence, unintended pregnancy, and STIs. Um, lastly, communicating assertively. So the purpose of this session is to learn the difference between assertive, aggressive, and passive behavior. And um, here, assess situations and consider your personal safety. In some situations, speaking up. So basically, class, it's in this uh, no, in this section. Um, it's actually better to respond assertively in situations no, instead of responding passively or aggressively. For example, if you are if you are um, if you're in a situation wherein um, you are lining up now, if you're lining up and then somebody you're lining up to buy something from let's say from the from a store now in the supermarket, for example, during COVID, so we're in the supermarket. Now they net nag sing it say niwas atobanga ninyo. What would you do? What would be your response? Would you be angry at them? That is called being aggressive, aggressive response. Would you be, would you do nothing? That is called a passive response, doing nothing. But assertiveness is being able to, being assertive means asking for what you want or saying how you feel in an honest and respectful way that does not infringe on another person's rights or put the individual down. So being an assertive, um, responding in an assertive way in that situation, you could say that you could maybe gently ask the person who cut in front of you that, excuse me, I'm really sorry, but 
Um, we are actually lining up here and we've been sitting here for a long time. Grabe in English, gito pwede mo siguro mo magbinisaya siguro ka ng dugay-dugay na mangin binagin niya din ni ma'am niya. Is it alright with you if you can um, line up at the back because most of us need to also buy what we need as well. Then it itong yan ang kapag kastorya class. Dili kailangan na maulit or or ka ng walay buhaton. So the best way is to really is to be assertive. However, it's not always the case na assertive na dapat sa depende sa situation. So if na siya, if for example, na ata sa isang ka situation na kailangan ta mag-aggressive ta mas maayos at na mag-aggressive like kanin in the, in, the, in the examples earlier on sexualization, sa rape, sa incest or sa kanin um, sexual harassment. So if ever kanin ang mga instances Atong gina siya assess ang situation kung sa ang best na response. Um, kay if ever if ever na anay case of let's say kaning di, di abuse na yun ang ang person na no? God forbid kailangan aggressive po ang atong response dili lang nga passive na nga ipabuat ipahitabo lang siya no so, because it will be damaging towards the person or um, for example sa, sa sexual harassment kung, kung in haras po ta mas maayo siguro nga assertive ang response dili aggressive no kay mas maayo nga maulit nang sige can you please not do that because because i feel morbid um mas maayo na can you please can you please um you can just ask them in a way na honest because it makes me feel like um it, it doesn't make me feel very respected if you are, if you um, call me out like that. Yeah, no, no, from English to shot. Mas mayo nga assertive on response. So, thinking critically about how to respond to difficult situations is an important life skill. Understanding the difference between assertive, passive, and aggressive communication and the potential harmful outcomes or benefits to these can help equip learners with the skills they need to foster their own self respect and confidence while also minimizing sexual risk. So, um, equipping ourselves with, with the skills in order to foster our own self-respect. Dilit lang siya nga, kana passive lang, pero na, to a degree, we also try to protect ourselves. No? Now, um, just going on, our, I'm just going to show to you all the material that I was pertaining to, relating to um, sexual sexuality class. Na. So this was posted in our classroom, this particular handout. And um, going to the section on safe sex, everyone, that is contraceptive adverts. Kindly read through this part, class, no, because um, for lack of time, we cannot exactly discuss about this, but this is part of the project, no? contraceptive adverts. It's important for learners to know about contraception, the different methods, and how they work. This exercise is designed for adolescents ages 12 to 15 and can be used and adopted to discuss contraceptive methods that are locally available. Um, so the exercise basically asks for young people to explain about the contraceptives, but that's not exactly what we're going to do. Here, we're, I would like you to just go through the, the information here. And in the project, just identify which which contraception or contracept, yeah, contraceptive device would most likely be applicable towards. I'm not saying that it's in your situation because these are very um, sensitive topics. But um, in a way, you can just choose one or two depending on you on what you would like to learn more about that you feel is more applicable towards for example towards how you are contemplating about using any of these no, contraceptives and if you have any questions you can also include that in the in the um, material so going to our classroom for instance the instruction in the classroom um, I did actually mention this part of the brilliant project. Okay. Also, um, yeah, in terms of safe sex, for instance, just um, try to include information basically on um, which of the contraceptives here would be, would uh, primarily be, um, would, would be, what's the term? Um, 
Kanibit ang no-brainer nga magamit siya. Kanibit ang applicable sa ato ang own uh, situations in terms of um, in terms of sexual activity na to, no? So, you have the various uh, contraceptive contraceptives that are mentioned here. So, just to uh, go through those and um, unsay ano, unsay ka na maayong uh, ma-apply na to sa itong own uh, scenarios, no? Um, and then, also, if you have any questions, yes, you can go, just go through all of those and just choose which of those are are most likely that can be used in our own contexts.